Hello and welcome to the uh, May 30th, 31st uh, Sunday School for Seniors class at Calvary Baptist Church. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you realizing our unworthiness and realizing that uh, by grace, by faith are we saved through your grace. And Lord, we thank you for your mercy upon us and we thank you for all the many blessings that you afford us every day. We ask that you would uh, bless this time that we have together and help us to learn something new and help us to be able to better apply uh, your will to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today, uh, we're going to go over verse 11 in the book of Jude. Uh, there's a lot there, so it'll probably be one of those one verse lessons. Uh, we, read, we read about the uh, certain men in verse 4, uh, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, to refresh our memories, that's who it's referring to. And in verse 11, we're given three specific examples of the actions of those certain people. Uh, Jude 11 reads, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor or Korah. Uh, first, let's look at the way of Cain. Cain's story is found in Genesis 4. Uh, the sons of Adam and Eve brought an offering to the Lord. Cain, being a farmer, brought an offering from his harvest. Abel, being a shepherd, brought an offering from his flocks. God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's sacrifice. A lot of us, and me included, assume that because Abel brought a blood sacrifice and Cain brought a grain sacrifice that the difference between the two offerings was sacrificial blood. But the real difference was between faith and unbelief because Hebrews 4 makes this plain. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain's sacrifice was probably more pleasing to look at than a dead animal but his sacrifice was offered without faith, and therefore it was unacceptable to God. You can give to God whatever you have or whatever you are, but you must offer it in faith. After God rejected his sacrifice, Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. That's Genesis 4, 5. He became angry because he knew he was rejected by God, and in a fit of anger, he murdered his brother Abel. And then he lied to that about God. 1 John 3.12 tells us that Cain murdered his brother because Abel's works were righteous by faith, while Cain's own works were wicked. Cain's lack was not in works, but in faith. These certain men were in the way of Cain, which is the way of dead religion works without faith. Now let's look at the error of Balaam. Balaam's story is in Numbers 22 through 25 and chapter 31. During the time of the Exodus, after defeating the Amorites, Israel drew near to the land of Moab. When the Israelites came close, King Balak of Moab sought to help, sought the help of a prophet named Balaam. The first delegation from King Balak arrived and God told Balaam to have nothing to do with them. God's words to Balaam were, and God said to Balaam, thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people for they are blessed. That's Numbers 22, 12. After the first visit, another more prestigious delegation came with great riches. Balaam wanted to go with them and took advantage of God's conditional provision that allowed him to go. Numbers 22, 20. Balaam lusted after the riches and prestige offered to him and God gave him over to his own sin. 
God warned Balaam to turn back when he was on his way to see Balak. Yet his heart was so set on the rich reward King Balak promised, he continued on. Balaam even ignored a talking donkey sent to warn him to turn back. And that's in Numbers 22, 22 to 33. Balaam knew that he had done wrong. In Numbers 22, 34, he said to God, I have sinned, and he offered to turn back, but he didn't turn back. He continued on, refusing to see that when God says no, we must take it as a no. Instead, God gave Balaam what his sinful heart desired. After meeting with King Balak of Moab, Balaam prophesied over Israel four times. But as he spoke God's word, he did not curse Israel. Instead, he blessed her each time. When he was unsuccessful in cursing Israel, Balaam then advised Balak how to bring Israel under a curse. Instead of trying to have a prophet curse Israel, he should lead her into fornication and idolatry. And then God would curse a disobedient Israel. And Balak did just that. He sent his young women into the camp of Israel to lead Israel into sexual immorality and idolatry. And that's in Numbers 25.1. Because of the people's sin, God did curse Israel. He brought a plague of judgment upon Israel that killed 24,000 people, that's 25-9. Before Balaam was guilty of the greatest, therefore Balaam was guilty of the greatest sins, deliberately leading others unto sin. Worse yet, he did it for money. Many Christians would never deny Jesus under persecution, but they might deny him if they are offered large sums of money. There's not a single sin that a corrupt man would not commit for the sake of money. A corrupt man. Covetousness is such a dangerous sin that it actually killed Jesus. 30 pieces of silver helped put Jesus on the cross. Lastly, we referred to the gainsaying or rebellion of Korah. Uh, the Greek word Antilogia means against the word. So it's a rebellion against God's word. Korah's story is found in Numbers 16. He was a prominent man in Israel and one day came to Moses saying, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And that's number 16.3, and that's some sneaky talking. Korah and his followers resented the authority that God had given Moses and Aaron. When Korah said this, Moses fell on his face, knowing that God's judgment would soon come. Moses then proposed a test. Each group took censers, uh, the things for burning incense, and came before the Lord. The Lord himself would choose which man he wanted to represent him, Moses or Korah. When they both came before the Lord, God told Moses to step away. Then the ground opened up and swallowed Korah and his followers. After that, fire came down from heaven and burned up all of his supporters. They all perished. Korah's rebellion was that Though he was a Levite, he was not of the priestly family of Aaron. As a Levite, he had his own God-appointed ministry, yet he was not content with it. He wanted the ministry and the authority of Moses. Korah needed to learn this essential lesson. We need to work hard to fulfill everything God has called us to be. At the same time, we should never try to be what God has not called us to be. His rebellion was also a rejection of God's appointed leaders, especially God's appointed mediator. When, as described in Jude 8, the certain people rejected authority and spoke evil against dignities, they walked in the rebellion of Korah. 
In closing, we can see that these three men came from quite different backgrounds. Cain was a farmer. Balaam was a prophet. Korah was a leader in Israel. Apostasy is never confined to one group of people. Uh, this was another of those one verse days where we just, there was so much to cover and it's filled with references that uh, require explanation. Uh, my sincere hope is that we all have a better understanding. I know I do. Uh, forgive my uh, stu stammering and stuttering. These are things that I'm not really clear on and I'm much clearer on them now. And I have, uh, I wish to acknowledge Pastor David Guzik for his commentary, which I've relied heavily on. And uh, commentaries are a wonderful thing to use, but they are not substitutes for God's word. They can help us to understand them better though. Uh, if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll, uh, be, we'll conclude the lesson. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the workers that you provide. We're so thankful for those that study your word and share the knowledge that you reveal to them. And we're so thankful for your word and for the truths that are contained in it and that you allow us understanding of your word. Your word tells us that if we lack wisdom, let us to ask, let us ask you and you'll give it to us and you, you won't upbraid us, you'll just provide it for us. You won't make us feel bad or, or anything. You'll help us to understand. Lord, you are so wonderful. You are such a good God and we sure do love you and we are so thankful that you love us. You love all of us and that it's your will that each one of us should be saved and be part of your family. Thank you again for this lesson. Thank you again for these truths and help us to be vigilant that we might serve you in the best way possible. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.